Try not to lose my spot. <laughs> but get my coffee. My heart's beating so fast. I'm drinking a macchiato at 6 p.m. I wanted to go to Starbucks and get a frappuccino, but they were closed. My dad went to McDonald's. I usually don't go to McDonald's. I'm one of those people who is like, I haven't gone to McDonald's in like 10 years. But you know, if you want to go to McDonald's, that's fine. There's no judgment. Clearly, I make exceptions. Hello, guys. Um, I got condensation in my eye. <clears throat> Mm. How's it going? <laughs> so I just wanted to check in and um, I wanted to have a con- I just wanted to check in and see how you guys were doing. This video doesn't really have any direction, but it was an idea that I've had for a little while to do a get ready with me video. So I figured that now would be a good time to do that um, because I have like nothing to post because the video I was working on has taken forever. So I want to do something easy and also a lot has happen and I kind of have something dumb things to talk about but not nothing really like super concrete so this could be really boring or really fun let me know so a lot has gone on since I saw you last we in the US have been hit by the um, coronavirus also known as COVID also known as something else and I have seen different reactions from from the mental health community from people who have OCD I really wish I had my glasses I'm kind of too far away from the mirror right now I'm totally doing my Okay. Uh, did you see me like put it on the same spot 20 times because I'm like self-conscious because there's a camera watching me do my makeup? Yeah, I've seen like, I've seen different responses from the OCD community. Some people are like, I'm freaking out. Um, and other people are like, I've dealt with worse. <laughs> I've dealt with so many imaginary, irrational scenarios in my head that this anxiety actually isn't that bad. Um, it is interesting though to watch like normal people, sorry, not normal, I mean, uh, oh, cancel me. No, it's interesting seeing people who don't have OCD or anxiety suddenly have the same amount of anxiety that I have on a daily basis. They are as scared of invisible things as I am. And that, to me, friends, is... What is it? Because I always say that I don't want to wish OCD on anyone. I would never. But at the same time, like, I kind of like it. Like, they know what it feels like now. I've never had a really good analogy for contamination OCD like I do now. <laughs> I usually say something like, for harm OCD especially, I'll say, have you ever like gotten an urge while you're driving to swerve into a lake? Or have you ever been really high up and be like, oh, I could jump right now. And then I say, oh, well, people with OCD get those thoughts too. Like we all do, but they overreact to them. They get stuck on them. Um, but for contamination OCD, I feel like it's in some ways harder to uh, understand, less stigmatized, but it's harder for me to explain because like what real world scenario can I use? And now I have one because we have a plague in our modern age. I shouldn't call it a plague. I also like to use the bear in the woods thing and be like, oh, you know how, if you came across a bear in the woods, how would you feel? That sense of terror, that's what people feel all the time when they have OCD. Like, not all the time, but when they encounter their fears. You know what I mean, I'm talking to the insiders here. So you'll notice a trend here, I'm using mostly drugstore stuff because like, money? <laughs> Who has it? Uh, so I'm using ELF uh, primer with blemish control because I've been having a little bit of acne in the recent years, it's gotten better. I love this foundation, this is my foundation. It's NYX Total Control, Total Control Foundation. I like this because because you can use, choose whether you want full coverage or partial coverage with how many drops you use. So I usually do one or two drops, which is like a light finish, or I could do up to like five, which would be a lot thicker. And like, I like seeing my freckles. I don't really have anything to hide. I just, you know, <laughs> want a little bit on there. I'm not really that great at makeup. I've just started doing it in the past few years since like 2018. Well, I mean, I did it before 2018 when I was like a younger teenager and then I stopped when I started wearing my headscarf. And now I'm getting back into it again, but I'm trying to like really learn how to do it and I'm hoping it work but I'm no makeup guru this is kind of like a general marbles makeup video because like I don't know what I'm doing for my concealer I use wet and wild for concealer I just like pat some on my lower lids because I got some eye bags going on when I first heard about the virus that shall not be named apparently I don't know if you're an avid YouTube viewer then you know this already but YouTube's been demonetizing people who say the word coronavirus um for some reason they're also doing constant senate coverage and like government coverage of the different bills going on so I don't know what that's all about are they getting demonetized too are they even monetized because that's like a Jimmy Kimmel double standard that I am not okay with I recently got these new brushes from eco tools that came with like some info cards which I love makeup that comes with info cards because I like I already established don't know what I'm doing so when the coronavirus first showed up I was one of those people who was like oh it's probably not that bad 
it's probably just as bad as like the flu and people are over sensationalizing it and so that like calmed my anxieties and I was like oh it's fine I mean like it's a big deal but like it's not that big of a deal we don't need to freak out and only old people are getting sick um <laughs> which is actually a really like terrible thing to say when you think about it but at first I wasn't really freaking out then I kept hearing people say like the world is ending and other people being like it's not a big deal and I like to be informed so I started to research it and it found it's not it's as it turns out it is a big deal it is not the flu different recommendations that we're getting from like the World Health Organization are like spot on we need to be doing that so I am uh, self-isolated so after I was researched after I researched more about it I was like okay this is a big deal but we still don't need to panic we need to be um, alert not alarmed this was before everything really hit the everything really like got really bad uh, but once it started getting really bad I was already on board so just so you know I wasn't like going out partying if you thought I was partying I'm not started social distancing and informing people on Facebook because really all I do all day is just sit on Facebook and share dumb stuff don't look me up on Facebook I will not add you I don't want you to see my dumb stuff that's for friends only not that you're not my friends it's just you know my like BFFs so for my eyeshadow I also have a ELF elf eyes lips face if you want to call it that eyeshadow palette which comes with blush and bronzer or like contouring stuff i don't contour don't know how to do that what i usually do on a daily basis is i usually do something brown i feel like it gets a natural thing i like the natural look and also it makes my eyes pop out and where are we uh midway through all right midway through last week um stuff started happening things started closing down people were freaking out toilet paper there's none left I did not panic buy or anything I'm proud to say I took it pretty rationally and I was very proud of myself as time went on I've gotten less and less rational and like oh I already I already went to therapy for this so this sucks for you guys but I'm fine I've been preparing for this my whole life <laughs> so I got less like that and more like I'm going to uh, catch this virus I started getting more and more nervous and I found myself kind of getting freaking out a little. I have um, chronic Lyme disease. I don't know if you know. My immune system's constantly working on that and I'm a little concerned about catching something because I'm chronically ill but also because I'm chronically ill every single day I have some sort of like weird symptom and I feel a little off like off is my every day. Whenever I would feel off I'd be like oh it's the coronavirus and that's just not healthy for me because I have tummy aches every day basically. I have shortness of breath every day. You know what you know what I Mean. I have joint pain every day. It's not exactly abnormal for me to be achy, but still my little brain started freaking out But another thing about it is I was um, working I have been working at a grocery store as you know They are staying open at this moment as, as they should be I'd be scared if the grocery stores closed I was coming in contact with a lot of people and I was not only scared of catching something I was scared of giving someone something and they were just way too friendly with me Like it's like they had no one else to talk to which I mean they didn't and I'm like I am the more person most at at risk of giving you something. Please back off. Like, lady, I don't want to karate chop you, but I'm scared for your life. <laughs> So yeah, I started getting really hyper aware of my somatic symptoms. Everything, everything, everything I experience is um, the coronavirus. Last Monday, I had to pick my grandmother up from the airport. This was, she was traveling, I had to pick her up, and I was like, I'm going into the thick of it. Never mind the fact that this is a very small airport, um, and like it's not international or anything, but I was like, the airport is the last place I need to be right now. Whew. And of course, she lives in, a, in an assisted living facility, so. Her place is on lockdown. And I was like, oh, what if I give all of these elderly people um, the coronavirus because I like hugged my meme? Uh, and what if like, like, what if I get it from the airport, give it to her, and then she gives it to everyone else. She's a nice social person. Like, I was scary. And then as soon as I got home, I Cloroxed everything. And I was like, I can't tell if this is excessive or not. So I wiped down everything I had touched. I washed my hands. I did the doorknobs. I did, um, I had gone, I had gotten like a milkshake or whatever. I did that. I did like, like the outside of it. it was just a disposable cup okay I clorox everything and then afterwards the next morning I had woken up and I was like and I, I remembered that I didn't clorox my phone the night before so even though as soon as I got in the house I washed my hands and then I went back and Lysoled everything that I touched in between coming inside and washing my hands and then I washed my hands again I'd forgotten to do my phone and you know I touched my phone the night before 
So I basically felt like I had recontaminated myself and everything else with the coronavirus. I wiped down my phone. I wiped down everything again. And that day I think I had therapy. So I talked to my therapist about it and we had a good constructive conversation. And I think she may have been talking to a lot of people about these kinds of fears. She told me that there was a really good article um, on the IOCDF about it which I was supposed to read, and I didn't, um, and good on me for being prepared for my own video. I was wondering if we should read it together, but I'm still doing this, so we're not gonna bother with that right now. But yeah, so my therapist was reassuring. Not reassuring. If you know anything about OCD therapy, you know that reassurance is a bad word. She helped me focus back in and told me that we should be Cloroxing things more. We should be disinfecting our things more. We should be washing our hands more. The thing is that we should be following the WHO guidelines and nothing else. Not doing any more than that. So even though I have gone from not not panicking to slightly panicking. I've still been able to like rein it in, but then when I think about leaving my house, I still get a little freaked out, which isn't good. At first I was like, I've done too much exposure therapy to really freak out about this. And now I'm like, no, I'm freaking out a little bit. At least a little bit. Because like, how can I tell myself I'm not freaking out when every symptom I have freaks me out? Um, this morning I woke up and I, I kid you not, the first thing I did this morning and yesterday morning was disinfect things. Yeah, I gotta be honest with you guys, I'm only like half paying attention to this. And I don't know if I'm even doing what I usually do. Alright, and I always put like something little, something dark in the crease for more definition. I'm doing this like sparkly gray, dark gray one. And then I'm gonna put a white one right in right where my tear duct is. I'm gonna do white mate. Uh -huh. Um, and then I'll voila. So I wanted to ask you guys, how are you doing? How are you dealing with the coronavirus crisis? Yeah, so the videos I've been thinking about, I would like to make some videos that are related to current events, but not talking about the coronavirus because I know that no one wants to hear about it anymore. Um. So no corona for us. Yeah, we're gonna talk about different stuff about um, structuring your time and coping skills. So the thing is that I hate lipstick and I hate lipstick because I love eating. And when I put on lipstick, well suddenly it becomes dumb to eat because then the lipstick wears off. But sometimes like you need lipstick, like it completes the look. I really only do it though when we have a formal outing to go to because we wanna eat. So anyway, I like to make videos that are about like coping um, during breaks and just coping in general and <sighs> stuff along those lines. Yeah, so I think like there's been a lot of different responses in the OCD community about coronavirus. I know a lot of people are thinking about um, their harm OCD has gotten a lot worse. For a lot of people, their contamination OCD or some combination of the two has gotten a lot worse. Honestly, all the themes bleed, bleed together to me. <laughs> it's all OCD. Uh, treat it the same way. Yeah, I my heart goes out to all of you guys, and I'm hoping that you're doing all right. But if you're not, I understand. Um, I'm with you. Something that I like to do when I'm really stressed out and I have nowhere to go is to do my makeup or to like get dressed because even though I don't have anywhere to go, it makes me feel good to look good or to feel like physically good. Like if I feel all dressed up and all done up with my makeup. It makes me feel better. I feel like when you look good, you feel good. So I try to do that. I try to like wear clothes that I like. Yeah, I think something something that's really stuck out to me, this isn't anxiety specific advice, but is that it, the, now is not the time to get scared and run away from CBT or run away from therapy of, of any kind or run away from um, your spirituality or your religion. Now is the time to lean in. Um, that's something that my rabbi said. Now is the time to lean in to God, lean into compassion and generosity and love, lean into those good things. And I think it's the same with therapy. It's now is the time to lean into your coping skills, lean into your exposure skills, lean into your acceptance and commitment skills. And I think that we will do great and we're gonna be fine. Um, another thing I like to remember is that the human ability to cope is far beyond our estimations. And as people with OCD, we tend to really underestimate our ability to cope with negative circumstances. And for me, like I've had some things that my OCD told me would happen, happen. And and surprisingly enough, I lived. I'm a lot stronger for it. Yeah, you 
can cope with things that you would never believe possible. So keep believing that. We are very able to cope and keep leaning into your exposure skills and um, and therapy skills and DVD skills, DVT skills, because that stuff is this stuff, that stuff was made for a time like this. And if your therapist is currently not having sessions, I am so sorry. Uh, my therapist is doing teletherapy right now, which I'm very grateful for. Use the internet, uh, reach out to people, not in a way that's seeking reassurance. Becky, I know that you're trying to do that. Reach out to people, reach out to your friends, and find some support during this time. Um, really, you're not the only one out there. You're most definitely not, because have you seen the grocery stores? People are freaking out, even people without OCD. So it's a little lesson for them on <laughs> what our lives are like every day. Don't freak out, don't panic. We're gonna get through this. Every generation has something like this happen. We're gonna live, we're gonna be okay. That's all I have to say. I've been coping. Um, I hope you guys have been coping all right too. And I just wanted to say hi. I miss you and I wanted to get a video up. Thank you guys for watching this. Let me know if you want another get ready with me chat or another makeup tutorial. Um, let me know how you guys are coping. If you have any great resources to share, please share them in the comments below. I would love to hear them. Um, yeah, just no um, fake news, that's all. That's my only rule. Thanks you guys for watching, and I will talk to you soon in self-isolation. Oh yeah, <laughs> bye. Everybody has a choose that.